Hi guys and welcome to Awesome Premier League. Let's analyze the 13th match day in the Premier League. We have uh, Leicester City, Man City, we have Arsenal, Liverpool, everything with Tom Rennie. But I also want to know your opinion. So leave a comment below in the comment section and you will have the chance to win a £10 free bet with Novibet. And do not forget to click on the like button if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to our channel and click on the bell to get all the notifications. And now let's go on with the Premier League. Thirteenth match day of the Premier League. This time we have all ten games, so let's analyze everything with you, Tom Rennie. How are you? I'm so happy the Premier League is back, so I didn't have to do any research on Kazakhstan for this one. <laughs> but the yeah, international break is always tough. Uh, it's always tough, also for the clubs because we had many injuries. So let's see how the teams come back, and also remember next week. We have uh, European tournaments, Champions League, Europa League. So many teams will be keeping an eye on the next week. So let's start with the first one, Chelsea West Brom. Uh, probably Chelsea is one of these because, yeah, they have uh, Porto in the Champions League. They have an easy rival in front of them, West Brom. So we all expect, I think, Chelsea to win 2 nil because West Brom, they don't score a single goal to anyone. They lost with Crystal Palace 1-0, remember? In the last game, no goals scored in the last three. And we know Tom, Chelsea is rock solid. They don't concede, no goals conceded in the last seven games. This is impressive, actually. Mm. So I think something like Chelsea not winning 2 3 nil will be a big surprise. Yeah, this is of the weekend, your most obvious Asian handicap of what's there. Because, I mean, briefly on West Brom, the Allardyce thing has not worked. It hasn't worked. He's not come in Red Adair style and saved the day. The players haven't gone for it. It might be one of the worst squads he's been in charge of. He tried to turn a football balling team into an Allardyce team and it just has not worked. Defensively weak, offensively poor. They'll be going down in about five or four match days from now. I don't see them winning here. I don't see them scoring here. As you say, Chelsea are winning to nil on a regular basis. I expect them to do so again here. The only caveat would be how poor they were against Leeds United before the international break because they looked a bit flogged. They looked a bit tired. They looked like a side who were due a rest. Of course, Chelsea have an entire squad of international players who have gone away and played one, two, three games. Doubts over N'Golo Conte, injured for France. Doubts over Mason Mount, injured for England. And so that could be an issue. But if they lose those two, they can bring in Mateo Kovacic and Hakim Ziyech. So they'll be all right. Chelsea will win this 2-0, 3-0, maybe even more. Okay, Chelsea to win 2 0. We have odds 1.8. Chelsea, Asian handicap minus 2. For instance, we have odds 2.33. These two options match, I think, your requirements for this game. Then we have uh, Leeds, Sheffield United. Sheffield United, another championship team. Also, they lost the FA Cup uh, quarterfinal, so there is no hope for them in this season. <laughs> No good news for them, sorry. And Leeds, uh, on the other hand, actually, they have nothing to play for until the end of the season, but they are showing that they are really a Premier League team and they beat Fulham before the international break with Bamford and Rafinha, two of the men that are performing better for sure. In this uh, successful comeback of Leeds to the Premier League, Tom. Yeah, I mean, the only issue for Leeds going towards the end of this season is going to be the fact they've got a whole bunch of players injured. There's doubts about Bamford going into this one, doubts about Liam Cooper, doubts about Rodrigo. Uh, still no click, still no for sure. So plenty of players going to be out for Leeds United. But, you know, the good news for them is that they're playing Sheffield United. Uh, I love the way you put it. No hope. And, and there really is no hope for Sheffield United right now. Maybe the only hope for them was we keep hold of Chris Wilder and come up next year. He's been jettisoned. The owner's been on TV this week talking about Wilder wanted £4 million to resign, trying to bury Chris Wilder and make it all seem like it's the manager's fault and not the owner's fault. It's a real mess of a club. I was commentating on the, the Leicester game and it was so pitiful. They, they lost 5-0 and it could have been worse. They're out of the cup as well since then, um, losing in the last weekend before the international break. Look, Leeds are going to win this. Leeds could win this with their second team. This is another win to nil. I'd be looking two. I'd be looking three. If Bamford's back, three nil. Without Bamford, two. 
Okay, we have then uh, Leeds Asian Handicap minus 1.5, odds are 2.65. This is a good bet for this game. The next one probably is uh, harder. Uh, we have Leicester City, Man City, two teams that qualify for the FA Cup semi-finals before the international break. And I say tricky because, well, Man City, they are winning basically every single game in the Premier League, but the Derby, but maybe Guardiola after the international break, thinking about Borussia Dortmund, he's gonna make some changes and Leicester City, they are in good forms. Tom, I remember me saying actually that they might drop from the top four as they did in the previous season, but they are looking strong actually. There's still time. There's still time for that prediction to come true. And last season, we got to match week 33, 34. We still thought they were going to do it. And they had a final four-week blow-up that cost them. Um, the good news this time round for Leicester is that last time round, everyone was dropping like flies. They were losing players. It's been the story of their whole season. Now, the majority of that first team is back. Uh, apart from Harvey Barnes, everyone who would play this weekend is fit. So Evans there, Soyuncu there. Um, Jamie Vardy is going to be fit. Looks like James Madison should be coming back. Tielemans and Didi, uh, Schmeichel. Everyone should be there bar one. That's great news for this game. The second great bit is that Kelechi Iheanacho has finally found some form. His best form for Leicester, maybe his best form since leaving Man City for Leicester. And I expect him to be up front with Jamie Vardy for this one in a two, which will cause City problems. The trouble is, as you say, it's Man City. They are beating absolutely everyone. And even if they are resting players for Europe, you know, Phil Foden is the kind of guy they bring in. Maybe the soon to be leaving the club, Sergio Aguero, might get a rare start here because they're thinking about games coming up after it. You know, the squad's an embarrassment of riches. The only chance, the only chance for Leicester is if City's squad come back and they're tired from their exertions over international break. Their eye is slightly off the ball in this one because the title is all but one. And as you say, there are European games and cup games to come. So there's a chance for Leicester, but it would be a braver tipster than me that says Leicester beat Man City. So after that spiel, I'll go basic Man City win. Man City to win. If you fancy a surprise, Man City to win, odds is 1.6. If we fancy double chance, for instance, for... Leicester City, we have very good odds, actually 2.62. And we have to remember, Tom, that in the in the reverse fixture, we saw 2-5. Leicester winning at the Etihad in yeah. our three. Very surprising result. Then also on Saturday, we have a very good game to end the evening. Arsenal, Liverpool, two teams that are playing in Europe. We have uh, Arsenal playing against Slavia Prague, Liverpool playing against uh, Real Madrid. And both probably thinking more in Europe than in the Premier League. They've shown this in the last actually weeks or even in the whole season. Arsenal, they drew with West Ham, sorry, 3-0 leading for the Hammers. Then great comeback for the Gunners. And Liverpool, well, they beat uh, Wolves. Uh, it's difficult not to think about an outright, uh, outright result here going either for Arsenal or Liverpool. Actually, yeah, I agree. I I I, I agree. I think we're, we're looking at a winner here. I think we are looking at a winner. I don't think we're looking at a high scoring draw. I think we're looking at one of these sides. Here's the thing about these two teams, right? You, you mentioned the West Ham game. Thanks very much for bringing that up. I'm still getting PTSD from that. But both of these sides need the all is lost moment. That bit in, in TV dramas where everything's gone wrong. You've lost your job, you've lost your, lost your house, and you, your wife has left you for the neighbor. And then suddenly it all turns around because you decide, I've got to fix my life. You know, move it on up. It's going to be okay. Arsenal needed to go 3-0 down to get something from West Ham. If they were 1-0 down, I think they would have lost the game. But it was so lost to them, they went all out attack and they blitzed West Ham and probably should have won in the end. They were so on top by the end of it. And it's a similar story for Liverpool, really, because the season has reached the all is lost moment. You know, they're not going to firstly challenge for the title. That went January, February time. Suddenly, they're not even going to qualify for the Champions League. And it feels a bit like all is lost. I expect them to improve from now. I expect Liverpool to be a better side from this point to the end of the season. Um, I can see them racing into a lead here. Arsenal trying to respond, but Liverpool blowing them away. I 
be looking. Firmino should be back as well for Liverpool. Makes a big difference to their balance moving forward. Might be a chance that rest Salah or Mane for a league game. They've been off playing uh, African Cup of Nations qualifiers. Long journey, a lot of exertion. Could be a difference maker there. So I'd be looking for Liverpool to win. I'd be looking both teams to score. And I'd be looking over 4.5 goals in this game. Oh, Liverpool to win here. We have odds 2.26 and over four goals. We have odds 4.37, really high odds, of course. And then we have this uh, Real Madrid Liverpool that I'm already nervous about it. Then Sunday, let's start with uh, Southampton Burnley. Southampton, they have their hopes in the FA Cup. They beat Bournemouth in the quarterfinals, so they are in the semifinals, but mm. they cannot uh, be safe yet in the Premier League. They are seven points off relegation and they've been terrible actually in the last months. Uh, the last one was a defeat against uh, Brighton and Burnley. Well, they beat Everton. I think no one expected that after five winless games. And it's a funny season for Burnley, a team that always collects uh, points at home at Tarf Moor. But this season they beat Arsenal, Liverpool and Everton on the road. So actually, if we check the odds for winning at uh, St Mary's, it's very good. 4.01. Um, this is an interesting game to, to try and decide what's going to happen. Because as you say, I think Southampton and Burnley are just about there. They're just about there. They can touch safety now. I think 37 will be the line. They're on 33. They are very, very close to it. For Southampton, the FA Cup is going to be important. But also the manager will now be saying, right, let's get the two wins we need and we can wrap this season up. Forget about it and focus on the FA Cup game to come. Um, Danny Ings should be playing in this game. If not, it actually, for the first time in a long time, doesn't matter because Shea Adams has been playing really, really well. Great for Scotland as well during the international break. So they've got goal threat. As for Burnley, you mentioned the Everton game. I was working on that and it was an incredible performance. Defensively, very strong. Ben Mee and James Tukowski, fantastic defensively. Dwight McNeil had his best game of the season. His goal was absolutely superb against Everton. So you've got two teams here that have got some attacking promise defenders who can defend and they're both going to play 4-4-2 four, four, guaranteed and so what's going to happen i'm going to sit squarely on the fence and say draw 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 i see no way either of these teams win i see a safety first way of playing if you're looking at trying to make some money both teams to score in a draw but it's snake eyes for me nil nil draw 3.5 Right now on Oddspedia, these teams are very close to get the salvation and stay one more year in the Premier League. Uh, Newcastle, they have to fight much more. Newcastle Tottenham is our next game. Again, Newcastle is struggling, two points uh, of uh, relegation because Fulham uh, basically they are not winning in the yeah. last two weeks. Uh, last game, they were awful again. They lost 3 0 against Brighton. And the Spurs, uh, they beat Aston Villa after their disappointment in Europe. Tom, they are actually close to Champions League spots, only three points away. So they can fight for sure until the end. They should and they must fight until the end of the season for this uh, fourth spot. So mm. I guess uh, we should expect an easy victory no, for the Spurs. Oh, yeah. Easy victory is exactly the right way to put it. I think Newcastle were pitiful against Brighton. It really was shambolic. I was chatting to some journalists from Newcastle the following day and they were all writing the Steve Bruce obituary. Like everyone thought he'd be sacked by Monday morning. And yet we get to two weeks later and he's still Newcastle United manager. They've changed nothing from that result to this. They've not rolled the dice. They think they'll stay up. And I don't see where that confidence comes from. It was a dreadful defensive, dreadful offensive performance that I think is going to be tough to recover from. Um, there was a survey I read this morning, which was supporter satisfaction. The least satisfied supporters are Newcastle United with around 20%. The least happy with their manager are Newcastle United with around 20%. The least happy with their transfer business, Newcastle United. The least happy with their owners, the least happy with everything. You know, the weather, the sausage rolls, you name it, they hate it. And they're right to, because it's awful. It's awful at Newcastle right now. And a lot of teams right now, I'd fancy them to get something against Tottenham because they've got a manager in Mourinho, which doesn't suit the squad that he has. And we keep coming to that issue of they've got a bunch of football players and they've got a manager who likes to get a score 
and keep it. And it just hasn't matched all season long. The reason Tottenham are still in the Champions League mix is two words, Harry Kane. Take Harry Kane out of this, they'd be mid-table. They've had a bad season. Uh, but Harry Kane keeps firing Tottenham to places they don't quite deserve. But all that being said, Harry Kane is fit. He is going to play. And quite frankly, I think Sheffield United right now would beat Newcastle. That's how bad they are. Tottenham win to nil, 2 nil, 3 nil, maybe more. First Tottenham goal, this is all over. Tottenham Asian Handicap minus one, for instance, which is kind of a cautious bet. We have uh, odds 2.14, so they need to win for two goals to get our bet. Actually, they are not bad odds for sports, so if uh, you are this sure, Tom, place your bet for the sports because the odds for them are quite all right. Then, if Newcastle lose, as you expect, if Fulham wins, they are out of the relegation zone. But this happened, uh, this was the case in the last two weeks. And they couldn't win, they couldn't beat Man City. These things happen, but they should have uh, beaten Leeds and they didn't do it. And now they travel to Villa Park, a team that they are not going to play for anything until the end of the season. They lost against the Spurs. We said it before and now they are in a bad run actually for winless games so if you think Fulham can finally win and get out uh, from the bottom three odds 3.4 there was a great quote from Sean Dyche a couple of weeks ago the Burnley manager talking about Fulham and he said things are different when it becomes but we're watching Fulham thinking wow they're amazing here the way they played against Everton and won at Everton what a great performance suddenly they were teased and tantalized with the prospect of getting out of the bottom three. And as you say, they've blown it and blown it again. They should be staying up as opposed to Newcastle, but they seemingly cannot get over that line. This is a great chance because Villa, no win in four. Villa, the season is over. They will not qualify for the Europa League or the Conference League. There's no way they're going to get relegated on 41 points. They aren't going to make up the 10 on Chelsea for Champions League. So now they're just floating. Eighth will be the best possible finish, in my view, for Villa, and it would still be a great finish. Could have been higher, but the recent results have, have dented that massively. No Grealish, no wins, no surprise. But um, he should be back. But I feel like I've said that to you for four weeks, and every time we talk about it, he ends up not playing again, and he goes tracksuit shopping. I don't know what he does. Um, look, I think Villa are a good football side, but I think with a lack of motivation here, there's a chance for Fulham. If they stay defensively strong, they can win, but... Oh, I just don't think they will. I'd be looking this one as a draw and both teams to score. Draw under 2.5 goals. 1-1 one, one draw would be my pick. Okay, draw. We have odds 3.49. Double chance for Fulham. Something that we might consider as well is 1.7. I think this is a good bet, actually. In Villa Park, then we have uh, Man United Brighton. Uh, well, seeing how Brighton, they are performing quite well recently. They thrashed Newcastle, they beat uh, Southampton. They are pretty much safe, not yet, but well, six points away from Fulham with one game in hand. Maybe they travel to Manchester and they think, well, we can uh, make it because United, they have uh, Europa League on Thursday against Granada. And yeah, they are doing their homework. They beat uh, West Ham, but could be a tricky game, no? This one for Man United. No, not really. I, I don't expect much from Brighton from this point, truth be told. I think the last two games, as you say, have got them tantalisingly close. I didn't see Brighton becoming a ruthless side. That was not something I predicted at any point uh, during this season, the last two games. That's exactly what they've been. Southampton away, ruthless. Newcastle at home, ruthless. They're going to need to be here if they're going to get something from it. They're only going to get two or three chances in the entire game. Usually Brighton need 15 chances per goal. Uh, I don't think they're going to get that here. For Man United, um, it's not a lesson he's had to learn often, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, but I think he learned it again in the FA Cup as he learned it against West Ham earlier in the season in the Premier League. Don't drop Bruno Fernandes, OK? You don't have any other world-class players. You've got good players, great players, You've got one world-class player. You don't drop him. Tottenham never drop Harry Kane. Man City, even when they do Pep Roulette, they never drop Kevin De Bruyne. They never do it because the one guy makes it all work. So expect Fernandez to come back into the starting 11. Expect everything to be built around him. It will be a bit easier because Pogba's back and fit and played okay. 
for France a couple of days ago against Kazakhstan, I think it was. Would you believe? Gotta love Kazakhstan. Um, but look, I think I think United are going to win here. Brighton won't have enough. Another win to nil. 2 nil, 3 nil. Man United, easy win. Okay, we have uh, Man United Asian handicap minus 1.5, for instance, 2.83. So they need to win for two goals. Uh, you are going to get a trip to Astana eh, next time. And you are going <laughs> to know that beautiful country as Kazakhstan. <laughs> Man no way. Good done, well done. Monday, we have uh, Everton, Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace, a team that they don't score a single goal, but they were able to beat West Brom because there was a known goal. And now they travel to Goodison Park uh, and they are pretty depressed, I guess. The Toffees, they lost with Man City in the FA Cup before in the Premier League. They lost to Burnley and Chelsea. So now they are three points away from the European spot. So they have to win this one. Yeah, those two losses in a row for Everton, I think absolutely devastating for their season. The, the Chelsea performance was underwhelming, but maybe expected. The Burnley game, they were awful. They really, really were. They, they could have been beaten more heavily by Burnley in that game. To make the top four now, the run would need to be amazing from this point. To make the Europa League, they need to go on a very, very good run. And, and maybe they don't want to qualify for the conference, like seemingly nobody does. Um, Look, I think Crystal Palace, the win over West Brom, yeah, you know, they beat West Bromwich Albion, but they're desperate to end this season. They're due wholesale changes. We mentioned the 17 players and the manager out of contract. That's something Andros Townsend's been talking about again this morning. Everyone's just trying to get to the end of this season and see where they are. Everyone's looking for a new club. Everyone's trying to pay off their mortgage. Everyone's looking to rent their house from August the 1st to somebody else, you know? Um, a narrow win here for Everton is the only result I see, other than draw. Nil-nil, one-nil Everton, nothing special. Maybe give it a miss. Well, Everton to win is already 1.85, so I can keep actually these odds are not that bad. Um, the last game we have Wolves-West Ham. Probably this one is uh, difficult to call and the odds are pretty all right for both sides. Of course, the Hammers are favourites at 2.63 because they are doing an amazing season despite that draw against Arsenal when they were leading 3-0. Actually, it was the opposite that happened when they played the derby against uh, Tottenham in the first uh, part of the season. And worse, they lost with Liverpool. Still many problems with the goals. Only two goals scored in the last four games. Yeah, real tough one, this game, to predict. I think Wolverhampton Wanderers, they look solid, but can't score goals. You know, it's been the story for weeks and weeks and weeks. My analysis of Wolves for you has been pretty much the same every single week since we started doing these because they look solid, they've got good players, they're well coached, they can't score. And I expect it to be very similar against West Ham. They'll look to be tight, they'll look to keep it defensive, they'll look to keep the ball as much as they can. They won't create a great deal of chances. For West Ham, Away from home, they've been very, very good this season. This reminds me a lot of the Aston Villa game a few weeks ago where Villa tried to boss them and Jesse Lingard wouldn't allow that to happen. I think with, with Lingard, with Antonio, uh, with Pablo Fornells, who should come back into the side for this one, who's crucial for West Ham in terms of work rate, and with him not there and Ben Rama in from the start, they lose that endeavour up front. I think West Ham are strong enough to win this game. I think defensively, uh, they still look strong. I don't think Agbonna should be back. That's a big blow, him being missing. But Diop and Dawson have done OK. Uh, apart from scoring a goal against uh, Man United and against Arsenal, Dawson's been very good at the back. Uh, Sojic and Rice in midfield, very good. Look, I think West Ham need to win this because um, they've got some tough games coming up. They've had some tough games. And I think they've got a lot to play for, whereas Wolves don't. I expect Wolves to have most of the ball. I expect West Ham to have most of the goals. I fancy a West Ham win. Both teams to score maybe, but West Ham win. Okay, odds 2.63. Then Tom, tell us uh, your ACA to end this video. I have gone with a whole bunch of favourites this week, as you'd imagine. Chelsea will win easily. They're against a, a really poor side. As a Tottenham, so I expect them to win and Man United to win theirs. The other two to make it a five game acker is a little bit more tough leads to win theirs tough to back leads because of uh, of the inconsistency of leeds united and if you're feeling brave and i am throw the hammers in there too chelsea tottenham man U, leeds 
and David Moyes' mighty irons all to win. Then, Tom, thank you and let's see each other next week again. Bye. See you then. Bye, everybody. These are Tom Rennie's tip. He, of course, he's confident about his West Ham. Let me know what you think. In the comment section, you will have the chance to win a £10 free bet with Novibet. And do not forget, if you enjoyed our video, support us. How? Click on the bell to get all the notifications. But first, like our channel, subscribe, and of course, click on the bell to get all the notifications. If you prefer to listen to our videos, you can do it. We have a podcast for you, and next week we are back. We have more Premier League.